In this video, we're going to write a program to get an element at an index in an array using recursion. So for example, if we have this get function here, and we want to get the element at index 2 in the array. So looking at this array, where is index 2? Well, it is right here. So we're going to return the element, which is C. So you might be wondering, well, what if we put negative 1 or a number that is larger than the index of this array. So if we put these invalid numbers in here, we don't want our program to crash, all we have to do is simply return null. The first step to writing any recursion is to draw the recursion tree. And let me show you how to do it. So this function is going to call a different function, get2. And this time, it is going to have three parameters. So it's going to have the list, it stays the same, we're going to have 0, and then we have number 2. And you'll see why this works in a second. Then this function is going to recurse again. So what we want to do is get the second index, which is right here. So now we only have B, C, and D. And since we move past one element, we increment this number, which is in the middle. And then now we have number 2. And we do the same thing here. So we get rid of the first one and move on to the second one. So we have C and D. And since we got rid of one of them, we increment the middle number. So we get two this time. So as you can see here, we are now at index two. And all we have to do is return C. So this function right here will return C. And then going up the recursion tree, this returns C. And this one returns C. And finally, the very top one returns C. Let's write our recursive function. We define the get function, which takes in a list and the index. Technically, all you have to do is return the index in the list like this. But the purpose of this video is to learn recursion. So let's rewrite it recursively. If this index is negative or it is larger than the length of this list, then we have to return null. And that would be if the index is smaller than zero, or the index is greater or equal to the length of the list, then all we have to do is return null. Otherwise, the index is inside this list, so we have to use the getTo function, which takes in the same list. It starts at index 0, and we want to get to this index. Now we define the second get function. It takes in a list, we have the start index, and we have the end index. So what is the base case? Well, remember, we have to move through the list until we get to the end index. And once we get to the end index, we return the first element in the list. So if the start is equal to the end, then we return the beginning of the list. And that is our base case. And what happens when the start is not at the end? Well, we move on to the next element in the list and increment the start. So else, we return get to we move on to the next element in the list, we increment the start, and the end stays the same. All right, let's test our code. So we want to get the element at index 1, which would be B. For this one, we want to get at index 2, so it should be C. This one is a negative number, so this will return null. And this one is index 4, which is larger than all of the indexes we have here, so this should also return null. And as you can see, it produces the correct output. In the next video, I will show you how to reverse a string and reverse an array using a for loop and then using recursion. And that is basically it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you want to buy me coffee for free.